read the agreement, Exhibit 4, and knew the contents thereof. <clears throat> okay, one more time. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the issues in this case are issues of fraud and deceit, fraudulent representation, or fraud as the term is here used, may be defined as false statements of material facts in a transaction made by one party to another, made with knowledge of their falsity, or made as positive statements of fact, without reference to their truth or falsity, and made with the intent that the other party shall act thereon. When such other party believes such statements and relies thereon, and is induced thereby to enter into a contract or transaction, and the statements are false and damage results to him, then such statements are fraud, which entitles the party injured to recover damages. Fraud is never presumed and must always be proved, and the burden of proof rests upon the parties asserting the fraud. The defendant in this case to prove by a fair preponderance of the evidence that is the greater weight of the evidence that he was defrauded as claimed by him. If you find the evidence on this question evenly balanced or that it preponderates in favor of the plaintiff, then you will find a verdict in plaintiff's favor. All right.